Okay, let's talk about which planet the silver chair was. I bet that some of you figured it out already. And there's no way really for us to <clears throat> have people raise their hand and give answers. So let me read you from this book, The Discarded Image by Lewis. This is where he talks about the medieval world and how the seven planets influence. This is what he says about the moon. And the moon had a name. It was called Luna, L-U-N-A. The moon was the closest planet to the earth, which meant it was the lowest planet, which is kind of interesting, right? At Luna, we cross in our descent to the great frontier that is closest to the world. Um, let's see. Her metal is silver. Each of the planets has a metal that's associated with it. In men, she produces wandering in two different ways. She might make them travelers who just keep wandering around and around, um, seeking adventures or just seeking for something, which is kind of what the children in Puddleglum do, right? But she also can produce wandering of our mind or of our, our sensibilities. And that is what we mean when we call someone, I don't think we actually use this word anymore, but we used to, a lunatic. If someone's a lunatic, they're crazy. Um, sometimes it's because there's actually something wrong with them and they're sick. Sometimes it's because they're just not being smart. So lunacy is when you are a lunatic and that's influenced by Luna, the god that goes with the moon. Um, let me see if it says anything else more in here that's interesting. So just keep that in mind, okay? Now, let me read from... Lewis's poems from his poem, The Planets. This is what he says about Luna, the moon. Lady Luna in light canoe by friths and shallows of fretted cloudland cruises monthly with chrism of dews and drench of dream, a drizzling glamour enchants us, the cheat, changing sometime a mind to madness, melancholy pale bleached with gazing on her blank countenance, orbed and angeless. In earth's bosom, so way deep down in earth, the shower of her rays, sharp feathered light reaching downward, ripens silver, forming and fashioning female brightness, metal maidenlike. Her moist circle is nearest earth. So she's associated with damp, dew, moistness, um, a woman who enchants us, makes people go crazy, deeper, deeper downward into the earth's inner core, female brightness. Remember how they, the, <clears throat> the green lady of the kirtle seemed the only brightest thing down there, not because she was good, because she was tricking them. Now, think in the book of all the things that have to do with that. Um, the book starts where the branches are drippy because it's been rainy, a marsh wiggle lives in the water they always get wet from the snow there's the water down below there's water in a lot of the books but in this one it's this dreary dampness that's always there lots of silver in the books especially the silver chair which he gets tied into it when he is a lunatic when he's going crazy only he's not really going crazy it's when he's not going crazy but she lies and tells him the other thing and she even says at one point to them when they're trying to defend that there's another world with a sun and a lion she goes what do you take me for a lunatic she said that um the owls are at night they have the parliament of owls at night they break out of the hillside at night the big dance under the moonlight the great snow dance the dark underground that's dark, dark, dark. Sometimes what's going on in the silver chair is just that there's lack of sunlight. It's the darkness of nighttime, even when it's not nighttime underground. They start in the book there. When they first get into Narnia, Jill and Pole, Jill and Eustace are up at the highest point of Narnia, where it says the air is very clear and you can remember things very well. That's why she could remember the signs there. And the sun is very bright. And through the whole book, then they go down further and further and further and further and further and further and further. And when they're down in the underground, the deepest part, and the witch puts that green powder in the fire 
then their mind starts to go crazy and they forget where they are and their minds aren't clear because the air's not clear. And then for the very end of the book, they start climbing up, 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 up again, right? And at the very end, they're back in the top where it's bright sun, bright light. Uh, King Caspian comes back to life again and they can think clearly. Um, let's see. The moon is also associated with grammar in the ancient world or the medieval world, which means school. Like when you're learning your grammar, you're learning school. And this book starts and ends at Experiment House at school. It's really the only time we see school in our world is in this book. And that's what Luna is connected to. Um, let's see. I think that's I'm going to let you go back and look for other things because there's a lot of them. But one really cool thing is that in um, in classical mythology, Lady Luna drives a chariot that's being pulled by two horses. And in our book, there's the two horses, right? Coal Black and Snowflake that are getting that are taking them up out of the underground where there is really neither sun or moon, but people are going crazy. Even the little gnome men had been kind of out of their mind for all the years that the, that the queen had been down there, the fake queen, the witch. And now they have their real minds back and they're going to go back to where they live, which is even deeper in the earth, but is bright with light. And the children take the two horses up into the real world and they come out in moonlight but it's not a nasty moonlight when they come out. It's the good, pure, Aslan-made moonlight. So the silver chair is influenced by Lady Luna, the moon. So we've done Venus, or I mean, sorry, first is language in the wardrobe, which was Jupiter or Jove, the coming of the king, right? Who breaks the spell of winter. Then we did Prince Caspian, which was Mars, who is the influence of battle and warfare, but also is connected to trees. And then we did Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is soul, S-O-L, like solar. That's where we get the word solar. Or the sun, as they keep sailing into the east, all the way they want to get to Aslan's country, which is sun. And then we've done the silver chair, which is Lady Luna, or the moon. So there's three left. Venus... Mercury and Saturn, which aren't very common things that we talk about. Venus is about new life. Um, Mercury is, well, Mercury was the god that ran, right? Wasn't he the fast runner? And Saturn is old. It's the oldest, the most ancient, not quite death, but the oldest of the planets. So the next three books, that's what you're going to be listening for to see if you can figure out which one uh, influences each book. We're more than halfway done. We've done four of the seven books, so there's three left, which is both exciting because I love reading them, but also kind of sad because I love reading them. I think when we finish um, all of the Chronicles of Narnia, probably we should read The Hobbit, but we'll see how much time there is, okay? So next time I see you, it will be for The Horse and His Boy, which is very different from the other books. We'll talk about why when we first start it. Okay, this is so exciting.